Uh, I, well, I just wondered if there were real world, uh, I mean, you know, 9-11, but you know, the war in Iraq, I mean, Bush, Obama. These when did like, West Wing start? Is it West Wing started in 99. 99. Yeah. Oh, it was just before it was yeah. Well, so it was still during the Clinton administration, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and it was sort of an homage to the, you know, Clinton, yeah. Clinton and, the, and that politically, you know, what they represented. Um, and then obviously it became a, a reaction against the Bush administration, I think, you know, very much in terms of politics that show there was a real pushback. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, Sorry. this is just a follow up. Uh, you know, you know, West Wing is like so optimistic, and there's a lot of cynicism and scandal. Um, do you, I mean, I don't even know what I want to say. Like, do you feel that cynicism? Oh, or yeah. You, well, yeah. all the shows, every yeah. single one. Yeah. I'm not sure about Madam Secretary, but if you look at How to Get Away with Veep, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, no, I'm talking about the political shows, you know, Veep, House of Cards, and Scandal are a very dark view of our political process, which I find fascinating. Because you know, um, you know, West Wing was a very idealistic representation, and they were fighting the good fight, and it was very much you know the politically correct, you know, the sort of progressive attitude. And you know, Martin Sheen is you know brilliant as he is was this you know very uh, unassailable figure in the White House, and it's so interesting that after the um, the wars that we've been involved in now for 14 years, and you know, which just continues with what happened the other day just to get worse and worse and worse. I think we have a we need to have a very cynical see it's beyond cynical. It's not it's yes it's cynical, yes it's satirical, but it also is a very you know, we need to look at our id politically. I think that we need to kind of actually get get that out there into the conversation, the dark side of our system. You know, we need to kind of unearth those those forces in our I think to, it would be Pollyanna-ish of us right now. I think people would be super turned off by, you know, the, the, the Reagan view of America or, the, frankly, the Aaron Sorkin view of, of America circa 2000. You know what I mean? Um, the kind of shining city on the hill. We're like, that's bullshit. <laughs> what, that's what we want to be. That's what we aspire to get back to. But what's the reality so that we can get in touch with what the American dream really means to us? And, you know, given the the... the very real, um, you know, look, we, we, we elected Barack Obama to kind of steer us towards a postmodern uh, American dream. And with Obama's ascension to the White House, as epic as that was, and as important as that was, well, you know, I was a supporter of Obama, but even as, as, a, as a representative of, you know, to have our first black president, um, the backlash um, and what that did to whip up the, the, you know, racism that exists in our society right under the surface, having him in the White House created this sort of homicidal rage in our society, I think. There was this backlash, which always happens with every step forward, you know, you get this backlash. So, that's the political climate that we're living in, and, and, and the opposition of the Republican Party when the, we'd have a Democrat in the White House was so vitriolic and fierce, you know, and has been for the past eight years, or six years, um, is it six or seven now, where are we? But six, six years, you know, it's fascinating, but I think that these shows are a representation, of that. it's a great question, you know, they are a, a real representation of where we're at, so we, we laugh with great relief at watching you know, uh, Julie, <laughs> surreal. All right, yeah. back to zero. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Uh, oh, here. Oh, okay. Everybody's back. Do you want to do one from Periscope? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So from Periscope, there's a lot of activity on Periscope. You said a, a curse word a little bit ago. They're very excited about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, apparently. Get so many retweets. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, so a question I saw in here that I, I thought was interesting was you talked about uh, that you, you like that Shonda was tackling so many kind of current um, political issues through the context of the show. Uh, so someone on Periscope was wondering if there are any issues that are of particular interest to you 
that you would like to see the show incorporate into a story? I really, maybe I'm, I'm well trained, but I, I have no opinion about what Shonda does. <laughs> uh, literally, I, 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 it's a similar question to people say, well, where would you like your character to go? Um, and I, I had this thing I was in, like I trust in Shonda. Um, I'm so interested to see what she does as a storyteller, and I like being surprised. And um, I just know that she'll be grabbing on to um, what interests her, and what interests her usually interests me. So um, I have no no opinion about it. Yeah. You want to do? Uh, we'll we'll do one more since that was a pretty quick. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Me. Did you? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Is that peeking up there? <laughs> Well, I guess you just answered that. You know, yeah. um, that's a great question. And I think um, it, it is, I, I hope it is. Um, I think that the fact that, you know, to follow up on the question about the long-term impact of Scandal, I think that one of the big things is young people are really into the show and getting the, and, and bringing up issues like dog whistle politics, which I thought was such a, a phrase I actually wasn't familiar with, mm -hmm. and I'm old. But, um, <laughs> it's uh, it actually. Because there might be some, it was actually a really intriguing moment on the show that had to do with, 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 uh, with I'm sorry, Olivia being trashed in a sneaky, subtle way, right? It's called dog whistle. Dog whistle called, it's like only, only the people, the, the dogs can hear the high, the high range, right? Exactly so right. those people yeah. who are prejudiced or racist or, or anti-women will be hearing <coughs> the ugly parts and everybody else just seems normal. Exactly right. Yeah. So you, that's code. It's code words yeah. for um, things that will be very inflammatory, which our political conversation is rife with, especially right now. In you know, with these debates going on, um, it's you know the buzz words like blood coming out of her eyes. Remember coming the, out the other Donald Trump, Trump thing, or you know, or, or, or the you know like, the the conversations in the Republican. You know, the Republican bits are particularly inflammatory right now, um, and. Uh, you know the issues of on you know, immigration, and you know things like. I mean, this is you know Donald Trump does it in such a loud way it almost isn't dog. He's got a dog woman, but you know Donald Trump is very very skillful because he, you know, he's like one of these guys as, as brash as he is. There's something, you know. I remember I, you know, I met Donald last year, and, and I very much have always disagreed with him politically, but I, I met him, he's so disarming and charming, and like, I, like I'd love to have a beer with Donald, he's like such a cool, like fun, outrageous guy, and yet when he speaks about issues, I'm like, there's a mouse. Oh, he's storming outside, I must be. Uh, he, he'll say things like this, yeah. but he said, you know, in France, you know, with this terrible tragedy that happened in Paris, he was saying, you know, if, if there were more guns, this right. would have been different. Yeah. Yeah. That's such a profoundly offensive, <laughs> insensitive <laughs> remark, and yet the dog whistle part of it is to the, you know, the NRA and to the gun rights, you know, the very right wing, that is just red meat. Mm -hmm. And he says it in a way that's going to get a lot of attention, and whip things up, and it'll offend some people. But what he's really doing is in a, in a you know, in a, the dog whistle part of it, to appealing to people who are like, "That is my guy," because he's talking about things. No, those of us, and maybe there are many in, in the Republican Party, go, "That was a very insensitive comment. That's an offensive remark." And Coulter, turned but so. <laughs> right, but to Ann Coulter and to others, you know, they're like, "God damn right," you know.